Right. So you want to you want to continue quickly, and we want to take a look at pressure. Right. Last day we looked at the first part of mechanics. Today you want to continue with pressure, and of course do thermal after. Right. First thing first, uh, we need to remember what pressure on a solid and pressure on a liquid. Right. Pressure on a solid is force per unit area. SI unit is what? What's the SI unit for pressure? Pascals. And uh, for, right here. And what's the order that I gave you all again? Next one is Nm minus two. All right. And pressure in a liquid. Oh, by the way. So pressure in a solid is generally dependent on what? Generally dependent area, right? They are both inversely related. So the smaller the area for constant force, you will get a larger pressure. So the smaller the area, the greater the pressure. And in a liquid, liquid is density by gravity by depth. So the lower you go, the greater the pressure. All right. Um, one thing we need to remember, what would happen if I give you a container, right? Fill it with water and, and replace holes at the same depth. What will happen? Right, all the water will shoot out the same distance. What that implies is that pressure at the same depth is equal. All right? Pressure at the same depth is equal. All right, from there, we need to know about the kinemic principle. Um, let me just give you a quick explanation on kinemics. Right, if you have a displacement can, Right? And you place an object in the can, that object will displace some water. Okay? If you were to find the weight of that water, so the weight of the fluid displaced, that is equal to the upward force acting on the rock. So basically, the academy said this. The academy said that the up thrust or the upward point force on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. All right? Up trust is equal to weight of fluid displaced. Everybody okay with that? So how do you find up trust? Well, we need to find the mass of the fluid and multiply it by gravity. But suppose they don't give you mass of the fluid. All they give you is the density of the fluid. Then you have to go to the formula. Density is mass and volume, and you will see that mass of the fluid is also density of the fluid by the volume of the fluid. So you can also use this formula here. Density of the fluid by volume of the fluid by uh, gravity. Quick question. How much? Quick little question here, right? The volume of the water that fell out there. What is that equal to? Right? The volume of the, the volume that fell out there is also the volume of the object. Okay? An object will always displace its own volume in water. All right? Right? So let's make a note of this here. This is one way again to find the upshot. Right? Upshot is weight of fluid displaced, right? Right? If you have an object, right? And the object is floating. Or we can say for the object. If, if you have an object that floats, right? The up trust is equal to the weight. Right? What will happen? So up trust equal to weight, it means it's floating. If the up trust is more than the weight, what will happen to it? It will rise in the water, right? And if the, word, if the weight is more than the upshots, what will happen to it? It will sink. That's okay? And if the upshots equal to the weight, it will float. All right? So those are some of these things that we need to pay attention to in pressure. All right? So that's the end of mechanics. So let's just go back and do two little questions on pressure before we start turmoil. All right? Right, it's in your summary there, right? Everybody have a summary, right? Everybody have it?
You all do habits? Seven, my what stuff now? You do habits, right? Send me a lot of stuff and I'll send it there. Yeah, everybody have it now? All right, let's start here. All right, so we're just doing two quick questions on this, right? This is um, Jan 2023. Let's see if we can just fill that in there, fill in the blanks there. All right, so let's answer that quickly. Complete the following statements by filling in the blanks, right? The formula for pressure is what? Given by force acting per unit area and the SI unit is Pascal or Newton per meter squared, right? In fluid, pressure at all points on the same horizontal level is, is the same, and pressure increases as the depth increases. That's okay. And an object will float in a fluid when the when the upthrust on the object is equal to the rate of the object. That's okay. So object will float if the upthrust equal to the um, weight. Are you okay with that? Seven is the mark set, right? Seven is the mark. Are you okay with that? Right here, they give you a little shipwreck, a shipwreck which is uh, put in some words at the bottom of the Caribbean Sea. The liquid pressure at the top surface of the shipwreck is 430 kilo, right? 430 kilopascals. Calculate the depth of the shipwreck below the surface of the area given that G10 atmospheric is 110 feet down. All right, try that in. Right, first thing first, write down what I give you. Right, question gave you the pressure on top, they gave you the atmospheric pressure, they gave you density. So first thing in any question, first thing in any question, write down what I give you, right? And then see if you can figure out what formula you're going to use, right? So write down all the quantities and see if you can figure out what formula. Pressure when you have two for two formulas there, right? Huh? This down to the Yes. Right? 
So you have density, you have pressure, and so on, right? After you do that, then you try to figure out what the formula you're going to use that has that has depth in it. Right? So, since they want to find that, what do you call it? Pressure is equal to rho GH. Right? We know what rho is. Rho is what? Rho is 1025. You know G. And uh, what's the structure of Right, the pressure exerted on the, on the um, ship wreck is 430,000. So we know the pressure on the ship wreck, we know the density and we know the gravity. So we can easily find that. Yeah. All right. Try quick. Next part. This is the next part. That's what I need. All right. So your um your question, your answer should look something like this, right? It's always important that you get used to this uh, this little uh, format, right? So the first thing you give them, you give them the pressure on the shipwreck. Right, the pressure on this shipwreck is 430. Right, um, when I write in something that is severe, I try to avoid writing kilopascals in case they use the wrong value. Right, so what I will do is convert it one time. That's okay. So I know that when I put the pressure in, there'll be 430 by 10 degrees. Okay, what else they gave us? They gave us the density of the seawater, which was 1025. They also gave it gravity with 10. And uh, well, they gave the atmospheric pressure where you don't need it yet, right? So we know that pressure is equal to density by gravity per yet. Density, sorry, let's make the issue topic one time. Pressure over density by gravity. Pressure is what? 430 by 10 to the 3 all over. Uh, density, which is 1025 gravity at 10. How much you all got? 42. 42. 42 meters. Hmm? Oh, 41.9, right? Yeah, the result should never be done for you. Oh. Right, so yes, 42 meters. But as I said, always, when you work something out, write the exact value and then all of right? Everybody okay with that? So your format of your answer should look like that. What they give you, then based on what they ask you, write the formula, and then substitute that work without you. Okay. Yeah. Next part. Calculate the total pressure on the top surface of the shipwreck. So they want total pressure. What will the total pressure be now? Right. Here's where you're adding the atmospheric pressure. Right? Because on top of the shipwreck, you have atmospheric pressure and you have the pressure of the water. Okay? So you have to add the atmospheric pressure and the pressure of the water. So that's what? 430 kilopascals plus 100. So that's 530 kilopascals. Everybody okay with that? Sorry, we just. Right. 
Pero es racional. Bueno, ¿qué hora? Te quedé todo el pressure. And you can leave the answer in kilocross code, right? Any questions there? Next part. It has to at the top surface of the right, they give you the area, right? So they give you the area of the top surface, calculated downward force due to the total pressure. Calculated downward force due to the total pressure. So again, right in the area here, 0 0.60, and they give you the total pressure, which is 530, right? 530 by 10 to the 3. I look here up, and they wanted to find force. So what's the formula we're going to use here to find to find force? Right? Pressure is equal to force over area. I look here up. So to perform this calculation, see how important the formulas are, right? So pressure is equal to force over area. Force is pressure by area. Right, any questions? Any questions there, Olya? How much you got here? Three hundred and eighteen kilonewtons. Kilo, right? All right, let's go again. Oh, that's the end of that. Um, what's the next year, Olive, with the pressure? That was 20, 21. Right, June 2022. June 2022, number four. Right, I'll give you a little more time on this one. 2024, yeah. Right, everybody can handle part one. Pressure on SI units. Yeah, I'll leave that out, right? 2024. 2022, number four. Suppose you had the paper for 2024. What are you going to do? Huh? You're going to write this here? If you had the paper for 2024, what are you going to do? Huh? Right, try this here. Try this here, take a little read, take out all the quantities you have and find whatever you need, right? Right, this is liquid pressure. Because it's liquid pressure, you don't need to add enough pressure. Right, this
Right, so again, um, write down what you have, right? To get the liquid pressure. So you have the depth, which is 0 0.5 meters. You have gravity, 10. And you have density of the water. Right, and they want you to find pressure. So this is liquid pressure. So the formula for liquid pressure is rho GH, right? So that will be 1025 by 10 by 0 0.5. How much you got? I didn't have a hand. 5,125. Right? Nice. So that's the liquid pressure on the, on the M diver. Any issues there? Yeah? How come I leave it in kilometers? Yeah. Where? Oh, kilometers? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right, I wrote meters. Right, it's supposed to be um meters, right? So, so yeah, so therefore that answer there will be a little wrong. All right, sorry about that. So it's 5125 kilopascals, right? Right, that's why you have to take your time and read the question, right? I did not. Next part. Uh, next part there, academy principle, just write the definition. Right, just to save some time, write the relationship or have a talk. Academy principle is what? The weight of fluid displaced is equal to the uptrust, right? Weight of fluid displaced is equal to the uptrust. Right? Work this out. What's the most important? Right, sorry, take, take a read first. Take a little read, and I want you to tell me what do you think is the most important word, singular word, just one word, in that, in that part there. What's the most important word? Right? Yeah, float, right? The answer is float. Right? Because it floats, what do we know? Up just equal to the weight. All right? So because it floats, we know that up trust equal to weight. Anyway, go ahead. Take a little read. Write down what you have, and let's see if you can figure it out. Write down what you have. Let me see what I got. Yeah, 
You had to figure out which version you're going to use. I think I wrote it down. Yeah, actually, I wrote it down when I was explaining this again. When I was doing a summary, that's not what I wrote it down. Right, I'm again here. Yeah. Remember, how short is the weight of fluid display? How you find weight? Mass by gravity. And I told you, if you don't have mass, you can use what? If you don't have mass, you can use the density of mass. Right? That might be a good example. Right, right. And then we're going to thermal. We'll, we'll do the entire summary on thermal and then fast papers on thermal. Right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't squeeze in radio out to today, right? I'll do that later on. I want to do a graph, right? Can I bring graph tomorrow, please? I want to do a graph. Actually, I can make it to the graph home and then bring it and do it. Yeah? That's a good idea. Well, it might take three years to do a graph here. Right? So let us write out what we have, right? They gave us the weight of the boat. They gave us the weight of the boat, 83,000 newtons. The density of the salt water, 1025. They want us to find the volume of the seawater. And I told you that the volume of the seawater is the same as the volume of the boat. Right. So where do we start? We start by saying obtrust is equal to weight. Right? How do we find obtrust again? Obtrust is equal to the mass of the fluid by gravity. And we know the weight is 82 thousand right but we don't know mass of the fluid right we do not know the mass of the fluid right so i told you that we could use density is equal to mass over volume right and mass is density by volume so we could change this formula now to density of the fluid by volume of the fluid by gravity is equal to 82,000. What the question asks for? The question asks for the volume of the fluid. So that's 83,000 divided by density by gravity. So that's 83,000 divided by 1025 by 10. How much is that? Huh? 8.1. 8.09, 8.09 meter cube. Ah, huh? oh gosh, so oh good. All right, 0 0.1, 8.1, sorry, meter cube, right? You all okay with that? Any questions there online? I mean, um, anybody, any questions? Everybody okay? Right, let's go to thermal now. Right, let's start thermal. 
Uh, first thing we need to know, we need to know the temperatures define us how hot or how cool a substance is. And it's measured in what? Kelvin, right? How do you move from degrees to Kelvin? Add 273. How you go from Kelvin to degrees? Minus 273. All right. Uh, there's something called absolute zero. Absolute zero is zero Kelvin or minus 273 degrees Celsius. Right? Sometimes they ask us, sometimes they ask us to, um, to show where that adding 260 came from, right? And there is a graph that we need to remember. If I give you the graph of pressure versus temperature, right? The graph looks something like this. And this temperature is in degrees Celsius. So the value that gives you zero pressure is minus 273 degrees Celsius. Okay. So if they ask you, if they ask you for the graph that shows the um that shows the conversion of temperature of degrees to Kelvin, right? This is the graph that they use. So instead of using this negative 273, what they did is created a new scale in Kelvin, right? And this zero mark corresponds to this minus 273 degrees Celsius. Right? So you have to learn the shape of the graph, right? Are you okay with that? So you have to learn the shape of the graph if it's in degrees Celsius or if it's in Kelvin. Next, a uh, thermometer, you generally have those two fixed points on it. You have the lower fixed point and upper fixed point. Right? The lower fixed point is zero degrees Celsius. Upper fixed point is 100 degrees Celsius. Right, the upper fixed point um, is the temperature of pure boiling water at normal atmospheric pressure. The lower fixed point is the temperature of pure melting ice at normal atmospheric pressure. Okay, don't forget out this word here, right? Any explanation? Um, there are four types of thermometers: the thermocouple liquid and gas thermometer, the clinical thermometer, and the resistor thermometer, right? Um, in your clinical thermometer, you should remember that there's a what? Right, I didn't draw it too good there, but there's a constriction, right? That allows what? It allows what? It allows you to take the thermometer out of wherever you find the temperature of, and the temperature value doesn't change, right? So the clinical thermometer has a little constriction in it. Right, your liquid and gas thermometers, the ones you have in the lab. Thermocouple looks something like this. You have a voltmeter and uh, there are two electrodes. One electrode is placed in something of a known temperature. Most of the time is ice. And the next electrode is placed in an unknown temperature. Let's call it theta. Right, because of the difference in thermometer and temperatures, our voltage builds up. So you can read the voltage off and use a graph or a formula and convert the voltage into degrees Celsius. That's okay. That's called a thermocouple. So a thermocouple does not directly give you temperatures in degrees Celsius. It gives you the temperatures in, in a voltage value. Okay. And then you have to convert that voltage value to degrees Celsius. What's one of the advantages of a thermocouple? That's a high temperature range, right? So, so you, can, you can measure the temperature change for high temperatures. And a resistance thermometer, instead of, instead of voltage, you'll end up with resistance values in ohms, okay? So those are your different types of thermometers. Then you have kinetic theory of gases. What is kinetic theory? Kinetic theory gives you an idea of how the gas particles behave, right? And gas particles are always what? Anisha, gas particles are always what? Right, they, always, they are always in constant random motion. And because of that, they are always colliding with themselves and the walls of the container. And these collisions give rise to what? Pressure. So the more collisions you have, the greater the pressure. 
So if you want to summarize this whole thing, you can simply say the number of collisions is equal to the pressure. That's okay. So the more collisions you have, the greater the pressure. How you can increase the number of collisions? There are three basic things that you can do. Increase temperature, smaller space, and one more. Temperature increase, smaller space, and one more. Right, more, more particles. So you can put more gas particles in there, right? So you have your kinetic theory of gases. Of course, you have to know them. And then from these kinetic theory, you have three gas laws. You have Boyle's law, which says that the pressure and the pressure and the volume inversely related at constant temperature. I don't have the formula there, so add it to my P1, V1 is equal to P2, P2, right? Charles law, pressure constant, and you get V1, T1 is equal to V2, T2. Pressure law, P1 and T1 is equal to P2 and T2. It's also nice to know the graphs, pressure and volume, volume and temperature, pressure and temperature. The volume of pressure versus temperature is like this. Right, um, Nalia, draw the graphs. Volume versus temperature, directly related. Pressure versus temperature, directly related. That's okay? Right, you will notice for all the laws, something constant. But there are, there are times when nothing constant. And you will use what law? You will use general gas law. All right, so let's make a note of the graphs. And if nothing constant, you're going to use general gas law. Right, general gas law is a combination of all three laws. All right, so if temperature constant, you could cancel up temperature and you get Boyle's law. If volume constant, you could cancel off volume and you will get pressure law. If pressure constant, you could cancel off pressure and get Charles law. Okay. So most important thing is that law there. If you learn that law, you can pick out the others. But you still have to know, you still have to know when what, what constant in the laws, right? And something very important to note. We always look in what? Right. Make a note of that. Temperature must be in Kelvin all the time. Temperature must be in Kelvin. Okay, so once you see gas laws, you have those little formulas to do. So the first formula that I've been doing so well is the gas laws. Once you see gas laws, you write them all. The one thing you have to remember is what constant, right? Right. If you want, you can make up all the acronym. Like if you have boils, Charles, and um, pressure, you have to remember that temperature constant here. You have to remember pressure constant here, and here is one. Right. And you can make up all the acronym if you want. Right. To remember what constant all the time. Nice, right? After this, we move on to, after gas laws, we move on to thermal quantities, right? Right, two, in specific, two specific thermal quantities that we have to learn are specific heat capacity and latent heat, right? So let me just point out something for you. If you heat a substance here, 
right? Let's say that substance is ice. When you heat that substance, ice could undergo two, two things. Ice could undergo a phase change. Ice could undergo a phase change where it will melt. Ice could also what? After it melts, what? Undergo a temperature change, right? So to work out the energy during a phase change, that will be energy is equal to MLF, okay, ML. And to undergo a temperature change, the energy is equal to MC delta theta, right? And C is called your specific heat capacity. That's the amount of heat it could take without, um, that's the amount of heat it could take to undergo a temperature change. Are you okay with that? Right? So again, I want to add on two more relationships. E is equal to MC delta theta. If the body undergoing a temperature change, E is equal to ML if it undergoes a phase change. Right? Remember, during a phase change, no, no change in temperature. During a temperature change, no change in phase. Um, what, what is called capital C? Uppercase C, right? Uppercase C is called your heat capacity, right? And uppercase C is equal to M by small c. Everybody okay with that? Right, so you have two more relationships there to add on, right? Right, um, let me just point out something here. I know we didn't do electricity, so you probably didn't revise it. But energy is equal to power by time, right? So energy delivered power by time, or in terms of electricity, energy is equal to current by voltage by time. Okay, so let's make a note of those two little relationships there. Energy is power by time, energy is equal to IV by time as well. Right, and last thing, right, there's our short turmoil is, right? Last thing in turmoil. What's the last thing in turmoil? Transfer of heat, right? And heat can be transferred three ways. Conduction, convection, and conduction is true what? Solid. Convection is true fluid, liquid or gas, and radiation is true Vacuum, all right? Right, so here you have the three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. And you have a good emitter and a good absorber. Good emitter is silver, is also a good reflector of heat. And you have a good absorber of heat called black, um, which is black, right? So a good absorber of heat is something that's black. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling hot. Yeah, the thing I left the AC on there.
Ready? Let's start one time. 2021. Right, John 2021. Write it down fast so you don't ask me, right? Right? John 2021. Let us start here with. Wait, wait. Oh, let me make sure I want to come back and do this later on, right? Right, here we have um, number four. Right, take a look at number four. Where is called that again? That is your vacuum flask, right? So a young, a young student has just entered secondary school. He was accustomed to having his home cooked meal warmed up at lunchtime at the microwave in the primary school. He misses this and suggests to his parents to buy a vacuum flask similar to the one shown, right? So your vacuum flasks have all those pictures, right? Using the information of figure five, explain in terms of the principles of thermal energy transfer, how each of the following sections of the vacuum flask helps to keep the homemade meal warm, right? So the axle cork stopper, the vacuum, and the double wall part there, right? So what does the cork stopper do? It prevents heat loss by what? Conduction, because it's a what? Four conductor of heat, right? So the cork stopper is a four conductor of heat. So it stops heat loss by conduction, right? It allows, it also stops heat loss by convection as well, huh? because remember it's a stopper, so nothing will pass through. Okay, everything stays in the container. What's the purpose of the um, double wall glass pencil? That's silver. What would I do? All right? Silver is a good emitter, right? So what it will do, any heat coming from outside. Remember, radiation is like electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic waves, right? So any heat coming on the inside, from the outside, it will reflect outside. And any heat on the inside will reflect inwards. Okay, so the double wall glass vessel, right? It's a good reflector of heat. So it will keep it cool because it does not lose heat by radiation. Are you okay with that? So it avoids heat being lost by radiation. Okay, what's the purpose of the vacuum? What's the purpose of the vacuum? Right, could you have conduction to a vacuum? No, so it stops heat loss by conduction and it stops heat loss by convection. So the vacuum doesn't allow heat to go through it. Well, by conduction and by, by conduction and convection. But could you lose heat by radiation through a vacuum? Yeah. But you have a silver wall to reflect it in one. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Right? Ooh, nice one here. Right? You have a method of mixtures experiment here. So in this in the experiment to determine the latent heat of fusion of ice, they gave you the information. Write it down, please. Write down the information there. What's the principle in questions like this? What's the principle in questions like this? Remember the conservation of energy? Something supplying energy and something receiving the energy, right? So what is supplying the energy there? The water or the ice? The? What's supplying the energy? Right? Water. So, this water supplying the energy and the ice, you feed it the energy. All right. All right. So, really, 
question right away, they give you, they give you the initial mass, they give you the initial temperature, they give you the final temperature, or oh, initial temperature. Okay, now, remember, the water, the water supply the energy and the ice is in the energy, right? Give me, a, give me a. Write it down. Right, and I'll tell you what they want, and I'll let you work it out. Right. First thing they want is the mass of the melted ice. Melted ice. So they want the mass of the melted ice. Then they want what? Calculate the heat loss by the water. I'm going back to the top just now. Right, but just write down part one and two. Part one is to find the mass of the melted ice. Part two is to calculate the heat loss by the water. Part three is find the total heat gain. Total heat gain and part four is to find the latency of fusion. Right, that's a part four. Latency of fusion, right? I'm going back, take a time. Take a time. Do it part by part, right? Find the mass of the ice, and find the energy supply, the energy loss, finding water. Are you just know which problem to use again? Are you just know if you use E is equal to M two delta T, so E is equal to ML, right? If it's a temperature change, you're using MC delta T, so if it's a phase change, you're using ML. Take a time. Try it, I'll give you a few minutes. Try the body for this put the little passes they give you as four point two, right? Right? Remember you all can download the papers. I will share them on the group if you don't have them, I can share them, right? But you can download the papers that we're doing so you have it on your phone, right? Thank you. 
All right, let's start. Part one, um, the initial mass of the water is 100. And the initial mass of the water is 120 grams. Are you okay with that? They said the initial temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature of ice, so the initial temperature of ice is zero degrees Celsius. Final temperature of the, sorry, the final mass of the water is 140. Well, how come it went up? How come the how come the water went from 120 to 140? Yeah. So the ice in there, right? The ice melts in there. And what's the final temperature of everything? Nice. So part one. Part one is to get the mass of the ice, melted ice. How are we doing that? Right, that'll be the final mass minus the. So that'll be 20 grams, right? So our first answer is in grams. And to give me attention to the unit that we're using, right? What do you ask for in part two now? Part two, they want heat lost by the water. So did the water undergo a temperature change or phase change? Temperature change, right? The water went from what temperature? 35 degrees. So, so the formula that we're going to use here to find heat loss is what? E is equal to MC delta theta. Everybody okay with that? Uh, before you work it out, you have to check and see what value for C they gave you, right? They gave you what? 4.2 joules per gram. So it means they're working in grams. Okay? So it's okay to leave the value as um, 120 grams. Okay? All right, so I can work it out fast. Plug in your bias and work it out. Huh? Right, so as we said, the mass is 120. C is 4.2 and temperature changes how much? 35 minus 18, which is? 17. So the energy supplied basically is the same thing here that being lost, right? <laughs> How much is that? 16? How much earlier? 8,500. 8,500. Nice. So that's the heat lost by the water, right? So the heat lost by the water is the heat gained by the ice, right? Huh? Yeah, I know. I just trying to give you all the help. I'm going to say, come here and I give you help. Right? Try part three and four quickly. Uh -huh. 
，再发自然波。Right next, they want an expression for this plane out here, right? They want an expression for the total heat energy gained by the ice, so that's MLF, that's the melt, and then to warm to 18, that's a temperature change, so that's MC delta theta. But okay with that? Who's supplying the energy? The water, right? So we can move on to part four one time. What's the value again? 8,000. Right, wait, that's not. Right, before we go there. Right? Um, what's the value of M we use in? 20. So it's 20 by LF plus 20 by, what's the value of C, um, C we use in here? 4.2 because when the ice melts is now water, right? Yeah? and temperature changes 18 minus zero. Yeah? And then it will out. So you can do a little match there and solve the LF, right? That'll be eight, five, six, eight, minus 20 by 4.2 by 18, all over 20. And again, it's a value that you can do it, right? So you'll have an idea. How much you got? Three hundred and fifty-two point eight joules per gram. Okay, without it, yeah. yeah.
really know. I tried to avoid saying yes to that, but yes. Yeah. What you have to just remember is energy supply, right? Energy loss or energy supply is energy gain. Somebody supplying the energy, somebody receiving the energy, right? So you're generally, yes. Generally, if it's, if it's, if it's ice and water, that will work, right? Generally. Next one, 2023. Twenty twenty three. Everybody okay with that? Everybody, everybody okay with this, right? Online, are you okay there? Samira, nice, good. Amil, Emily, good. Any questions? You'll feel free to ask, right? Let's go again. This is twenty twenty three now. Right, take a little read, tell me what you think. Take a little read and tell me what you think. Huh? Okay, the tree shows the section of a white plastic pipe. To which water is flowing. The water in the pipe is heated by the sun. Right? Describe how heat energy is transferred from the sun to the water inside the pipe. So, how we going to explain heat transfer? Right, we don't really have to talk about good and bad, but we want to know how heat is transferred from the sun to the water. Right, it might be an efficient process, but we just need to know how heat is transferred, right? From the sun to the water inside. So how, how does the heat from the sun reach the pipe? Radiation, right? So the heat is radiated from the sun to the pipe, and then what? Right? It's not it's not it's poor conduction, but it's still conduction, right? Then conducted through the pipe, and then what? And then convection is the heat is transferred to the water. But okay with that? Yes, going over. So from the sun to the pipe, right? So the heat. That already. So the heat energy from the sun is right is transferred to the pipe via radiation. The heat energy from the sun to the pipe is via radiation. Then conducted through the pipe. Right, you can put in brackets slowly because I'm poor conductor. Then slowly, right, conducted through the arm plastic pipe. Then convection is, and then convection transfers the heat through the water. So it's technically all true. Huh? Convection um, through the water. And the heat is, the heat is transferred by con convection through the water. So it's radiation to conduction to convection. Are you okay with that? Suggest two ways. Wait, or let's put it up on the screen. Suggest two ways in which. The efficiency of the thermal energy absorbed by the water in the pipe can be increased. How we can increase the efficiency? Right? Use a, a black metal pipe. Right? Anything else we can do? So, so we take the pipe, the black pipe, and we make sure it's metal. 
Anything else? Anything else, anything else we can do? Well, a larger surface area. So you, can, you can use some, a larger surface area in pipe, but then if the pipe too large, what will happen? Right? Right. The water flowing through wouldn't be able to get it fast enough. Right? Right, so the best thing to do is to blacken a metal pipe and use that instead. Right, and what you will also see like in a solar water heater, instead of using a pipe, what they will have is a nice flat surface. Right, so they increase the surface area that will be exposed to the sun. Right, two marks, two marks. Next one here, more explanation. This one is mainly explanations. <laughs> right, um, what's that, Raquel, Rachel, Rochelle? Huh? Right. Huh? Right. Um, use a metal spoon to stir a hot liquid in cups. Right. Metal spoon in a cup containing a hot liquid. I'll give a diagram. Right. After a short time, um. Right, after a short time, uh, Raquel observed that the metal spoon felt hot. Describe two ways in which thermal energy is conducted to the metal spoon at a molecular level, right? So when they say molecular level, they wanted to talk about the particles inside the spoon, right? How are you, how are you explaining that? Am I gonna try to do research in this? Want to try? Right. So, um, so guess what will happen, right? The particles, right? One time, the particles in contact with the warm water. The particles in contact with the warm water. will gain kinetic energy. Will gain kinetic energy. Will gain kinetic energy and vibrate at a faster rate. And vibrate at a faster rate. Right, this will transfer for stuff. This will transfer the kinetic energy. This will transfer the kinetic energy. Across the temperature gradient, right? That's on the part of the solar right? Across the temperature gradient. Yeah. Across the temperature gradient. What I mean is that it will transfer in from the warm part to the colder part. Right? That is good one. That is one way that thermal energy is Something else in the room. One more. The metal, right? Metal hub, there was three electrons. So the three electrons now will gain energy and be able to move fast and move quickly through the um, solid. Right, so the second thing is that the free, the free electrons in the metal, the free electrons in the metal, but also in kinetic energy, the free electrons in the metal will also gain kinetic energy and quickly transfer the energy and quickly transfer the energy throughout the metal. Right, so keep this chance. 
two ways the particles vibrating and the electrons moving quickly. Right? Last part, oh, sorry. Next part, metal spoon is now replaced by a wooden spoon. Metal spoon is now replaced by a wooden spoon. Right, metal spoon is now replaced by a wooden spoon. Um, Raquel observed that the wooden spoon did not feel hot. Why? Right, number one, and the main reason is, right, the wood doesn't have the free electrons, right? So it's a poor conductor of heat. So therefore heat is not transferred to the spoon in the same way as the metal, okay? Right, so heat is not transferred to the wooden spoon as quickly as the metal, right? Because the wood, wood does not have free electrons. Wood does not have free electrons, free localized electrons. Okay, so that, that makes wood a poor conductor. Take a little read, try this here. Very, very similar to what we just did. Try that there and then let's look for one with gas loads. Yeah. 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 Uh, one, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, do this part. Quick, quick, quick. I'll give you five minutes after. Not to move, huh?
right? So what they give us? Right, so they gave us a thermometer is placed in a cup. They gave it a mass of the water, which is 200 grams. And it gives a reading, so they give it the initial temperature, 22 degrees to Celsius. Small pieces of ice, so the initial temperature of ice is zero, is added to the water one by one. The mixture is stirred until the ice melts. Right? The process was repeated until the temperature recording on the thermometer was zero. So the final temperature appears to be zero degrees Celsius. The total mass of ice added to the water was, so the mass of the ice added to the water was 16 grams. Calculate the thermal energy lost by the original volume of water given that the heat capacity is 4.2 percent of the heat capacity, right? So what's the formula we're going to use for energy here? E is equal to M, right? Because the water underwent a temperature change, right? What's the mass of the water? What's the specific capacity? 4.2. And what's the temperature change the water underwent? Right? It was 22 and minus 2. Right? How much is that? 18? Or 80? Are you okay with that? Nia, you follow why we use that formula there? Are you okay with that, right? And the last part. You're, you're, you're ready to have an idea of what the answer should be from the last one. Assume that all the thermal energy lost by the original volume of water in the beaker is transferred to the ice. Right? So you're assuming all the energy lost by the water is transferred to the ice. Calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of the ice. Something a little different with this one, right? I want to help you out here. But think of what happened to the ice. Well, the ice, the ice melts, right? Did the ice undergo a temperature change? No. Because it's see that the final temperature was what? Zero. So therefore, do we need to add on the MC delta theta class from the last one? No. Okay. So you see, here's an example where the same formula, but because it's no temperature change in the last part, right? So that's, that's what is up for. Sometimes it might generally be the same thing all the time. So important, it's important to understand how to get it. So the energy supplied by the water is equal to the energy received by the time. This is the right formula, we'll quick. Was the mass of the ice? Oh, yeah, right? Mass of the ice. Anybody lost? Oh, are you okay? For now, are you okay? Right, so why is that in the machine? Why was it like that? Okay. Yeah, so we're using um, E is equal to MLF, right? The energy supplied is 18,480, the mass is 60, and we're going to unsolve the LF. 
So LF is equal to 18,480 over 300 and 8. Right, so close to the last one. What? The last one was what, then 352? Right. Around the top. So I break? Yeah. Then we have a little bit. Yeah. All right, hopefully I have um, six minutes. I can't do this to the right. Six minutes, and then we're going to do an exit. We're going to do some more. Huh? Six minutes. Right here, guys. Stay right here. Do you want to continue again? We'll be doing um twenty twenty two, June twenty twenty two.
Alina Sira Dimitri Dequan. Pronounce the name right? Pronounce the name. Helen. Zena. Nikolai. Oh, next Nikolai. 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 And one long thing there. What is this? Soraya, Ashley, Kumar, Warrell, Shivrish, Elena, Nia, Rikash, Josiah, Terrell, Terrell, who's next to you there? Nalia, Arya, Trisha, Divish, I am Divish one, do I know that? Divish. Tisha, all them going together. Clarissa, Nisha, Maraj. Yeah, no, no. Nikolai, Shania, Shania, come in front of her, Shania. Michael. Michael here. Michael was saying, no, Stefan, Xavier. No, that's Xavier London. Azaria, Justin, Sapir, Delana, Hishana. Dailo, Vishana, Zahir, Jilan. Jilan, Mizra. Jilan. Michael, right? You shall just call him now. What's his name? What's his name? Xavier, okay. Now, all you study is going boy in your class and boy. Study some physics now. Huh? Boy in your class and boy then. Right, five minutes up. Uh, six, seven minutes gone. So let's go. Come on. And all you'll be complaining so you didn't finish the syllabus. We make sure you finish everything comfortable and you have a fast way for you. Right. Um, let's go, right? Number three. This is 2022, June 2022. Completed the table by putting the various particular information, right? Yeah. Right, which thermometer will give you a very high, extremely high, um, rapidly changing temperature? Yeah, thermocouple. So let's go with the thermal. Couple, right? 34 to 43, what type of thermometer is that? Clinical. And it's used for what? It's checked for what? Right, you to basically check body temperatures, right? Which is within the three inch here. If it's lower than this, it's dead, above you dead, right? Right, use the measure. Right, use the measure body temperature. Huh? Um, next one, mainly mainly measures boiling and freezing point and room temperature. Which one is that? Liquid and gas thermometer, yeah. Why oh, didn't you put that one? But that's a liquid and gas thermometer. Liquid and uh, 
I don't know that, right? And um, what do you mean? Right, generally, zero degrees to 100 degrees. Okay, nice. Say the value of the ice point on the Celsius scale. Ice point is what? Celsius scale just means in degrees to Celsius. And, and Kelvin? Minus 270. Are you okay with that? Next. Um, the graph in figure three shows how pressure varies with inverse temperature, sorry, volume. Say the law associated here. Whose law is that? Boils, right? That's okay? Yeah. Why is the graph upside down? Well, different to the one I gave you. Right, because the X is one on V. So pressure is proportional to one on V. Right, the one I gave you was for? Pressure and heat. Okay, so pressure is inversely related to volume, right? So the law there is boys law. All right, part one boys law. Yeah, everybody okay with that? Yes, yeah, sir. You okay with that? Use the graph on figure three to determine the volume when the pressure is two hundred and fifty kilopascals. How are we doing that? Let's go back to the graph. How are we doing that? I forget the value already. 250. Yeah? How are we doing that? Um, yet? How are we doing that? Yeah. Right, you're going up to 250 and then it's coming down here, right? What's here? 0 0.019. That's it? You have to inverse it, right? This is one over volume, right? So volume is equal to one over 0 0.019. Better pay attention to the unit, right? That's centimeter cube, the answer will be in, right? How much is that? One over 0 0.09019 as well. Right. How much? 52.6 cm cube. Yeah, Richard, you okay with that? Yes. Online, are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, nice. Use your answer in C part two to calculate a new volume. When it goes from 250, when it goes from 250 to 7975. And the volume that we got there was what again? 50 what? How are we doing that? Um, and I'm gonna pick on somebody. Soraya. Boys law, right? P1, P1 is equal to? I don't remember the name. Right, I remember it had a scratch here and that was yours. Right, so you're using boys law. Go ahead, look at how fast. P1, P1 is equal to P2, P2.
Not really thing on the body thing now. Like everything in my day. Right? You have P1, you have P1 and everything there, right? You have V1 here, you have P1 here, and you have your P2 here. Right? You have P1, you have P2, you have your V1 and everything. Huh? Nah, I'll tell you. I'll come with a new idea. I'll try something different. I'll figure it out. Yeah. P1, B1 is equal to P2, P2. P1 is um, 250, right? You can leave it because both in kilopascals, right? And V1 is 52.6. P2 is 975. And you have to find P2. So that's 250 by 52.6 all over 975. And before you work it out, you should have an idea. It will be larger or smaller, right? Right? Remember the inversely related. So if the pressure goes up, the volume should go down. So you should get something smaller, right? How much? And the SI unit. And the SI unit. Can you remind me? Yeah. Centimeter cube, right? Centimeter cube. Everybody okay with that? Yeah? Right, let's change it up so it wouldn't get too poor. Let's come out of the board. Put somebody on the back to come on the board. Let me see. Who's that next one? Yeah, Shibish. Who's that behind Shibish Island? All right. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go again. Where are you this again? 22, so we're down 22. Let's go to 21. We did 21 initially. Yeah, no? This is it June 2020? Huh? What? But now it's June. Yeah, Jan 2020. Jan 2020. I don't do this, right? Right, you have to give it the definition, so I'll just leave it out that for now. Write down your values. Let's do the calculation. Write down the values. Anybody not seeing? Can I give an example? Give us a Right, so Nikolai. Can help us do this question. You'll do the first part, and the next Nikolai will help us, right? Right, try and take a little read. It's just two formulas. So you have to figure out temperature change or pH change. Really easy. 
we, 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 we do about four hours already for the morning. You get it. From Nikolai, try it quick. And again, it's a block of ice. And, it, and like they put in some water. So they give you a block of ice, they give you the final temp, they give you the mass of the block of ice, and they give you the temperature of the block of ice. It's placed in a container. They give you the latent heat, they give you the specific heats, and so on and so on, right? So Nikolai, they want the heat energy. So you have two options, E is equal to MC delta theta, or E is equal to MLF, right? So take a look at the question. Did it undergo a temperature change or a phase change? Right, so which formula is that? I know L and the M, M, C, delta, theta, right? So that's one mark there. And then there's substitute values, right? That's an easy three marks there. Pikash, how are you doing it? You doing it? What's this one next time? Um... Ariel, what's the name again? In behind um, next Ariel. Finish your name here. Ten to the power of three. <laughs> Oh, I have to send all the days for the all night. So make sure we get that done Monday yeah? because I don't want, I want to give you all the full choice, right? For the all night. So. I don't want you to put on the name and it don't show up, right? Right, let's work it out. Right? So something that um big one for top there was a big member. What is here? Right? If you all look, if you all look at the units there, all the units have kilograms in them. So it means that it so it means that you put in kilograms, right? If those units have grams, then they look in grams. All right. So everything okay there, right? So you're working in um you're working in kilograms. So we use it e is equal to mc delta theta. The mass of the ice is 2.5. This specific capacity of the ice, remember it did not melt, so it's still ice. That's 2.1 by 10 to the 3. And temperature change is what? Temperature change is 10. Right? No way with the sign. A negative sign will just indicate energy being lost. That's all, right? So the temperature change at 10. Okay? How much is that? 50. So you can do it now? Right. Now, next one. All right. Next, Nikolai. Next, Nikolai. Nikolai. Yeah, Nikolai. Nikolai, number two. 
the heat energy required that is going to give an answer really is here. It's not the cafe. Only the, the, the female washroom is the male done by the cafe, right? The heat energy required to convert all the ice from zero to water at zero. Space change. So we use them. Very good. So it's a phase change, so we use it. E is equal to MLF. The mass is the same, 2.5, and LF is 3.3 by 10 to the 5. How much is that? Yeah, oh, you didn't work it up? Sorry, eight point two five by ten to the power of five. Eight point two five by ten to the power of five. Right, and the SI unit of joules, I keep on again, Judah. Okay, Judah. Okay, Next part. Yeah, nice. They want you to get the power output. The water in the container is now heated to a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius by, a, by an electric heater for 600 seconds. How do you find power? Um, Finish. Anyone? Wait, that's pronounced. Why I can pronounce? Well, we already got some easy names now. Sing, sing. We're trying to sing. Right, sing. That's Mautiana. How is that power? Power is what? Power is energy over time. Right? We have the time already. How are we getting the energy? Did the water undergo a temperature, a phase change or temperature change in it now? Elena? Temperature change. Nice. So, Shavish, the formula we're using is what for energy? Pardon? Shavish, listen to our answer, right? What's the formula we're using for energy if it's a temperature change? E is equal to what? All right. So you said E is equal to MC del theta. What's the mass you using? 2.5, right? Because yeah, because that's the same melted arm. Um, that is the same uh, ice that melt, right? The same water. Right, so power is equal to energy over time. Right, so you're using MC delta theta on T. M is 2.5, C is 4200, and temperature change is 80, right? All over 600. How much y'all got? How much you got? 
1.4. So 1.4 kilojoules. Kilo, wait, wait, kilojoules or kilowatts? Power, right? Power is in watts. Check it back and make sure now, please. You correct? You sure? Uh, All right. All right. Shushad, you okay with that? Right, so that's two more there. Yeah. All right. Oh, last part. Roy, last part here. State one assumption that must be taken into account. What's the assumption in all thermal labs? No heat loss, they didn't buy. Good job, Roy. Right, let's go again. Let's go again. Are you okay? Yeah. Enough to mull? Yeah. Yeah, enough to mull? Let's do the beginning now. I want to do minus of electricity. All right? Huh? Now it's here. I want to, I'll take, I'll take long to set up. Right, so we have two more. I just want to introduce the first part of radioactivity. And then we can do radioactivity and madness tomorrow. I want to do that after electricity. All right, let's just run through the first part of radioactivity and then I'll do the harder part tomorrow. All right? Are you okay with two more? Are you okay with two more there? Yeah? All right, let's do the first little part there of read. Anybody here never did read activity in school? Never? Hey, you don't count. You do it both five time and lessons. All right. Well, I have, if you if go on the channel, it have three videos that you can watch in order that explain everything in radioactivity. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can take a look at that, right? All right, anyway, let's start radioactivity and then we'll do a code. Right, so let's run through the first part of radioactivity. Activity, and then I will do the next part tomorrow and then do some past papers, right? Right, so tomorrow we're going to try to do radioactivity and madness, right? I don't really have plenty more questions, but I'll go to the theory and thing, right? All right, so let's take a look at radioactivity. The first part of we was 90%. The first part of radioactivity has to do with um, figuring out what the model of the atom looks like, right? So the first part of radioactivity is the Geiger mass and experiment, right? What they did, what they did, um, Nalia, what they did is that they shot alpha particles at a sheet of cold foil and they observed three things. What they observed? They observed that most of the alpha particles went straight through. A very small amount was deflected, and an even smaller amount was reflected. Okay? As a result, there are three conclusions. Number one, first conclusion, the atom mainly had empty space. Second conclusion, it appeared to have a small positive core. 
And the third conclusion was that that small called dent. Okay. And then later on, we went on to the model of the atom that we know. Right? The model of the atom we know has what in the middle? Has the nucleus in the middle, and the nucleus has the protons and neutrons. And then around it, you have your shells with electrons, right? So here you have your shells, and these things here are supposed to be your electrons. Okay? Um, remember, you have protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? What's the mass of the proton? One mass of the neutron. Mass. Mass of the neutrons is one, and the mass of the electron is zero. Oh, so so what is here? If you have a if you have a um that's that's four, right? When the particles come here, they would deflect it. Right? So the change for slightly. But there are one or two that hit it and reflect. So they come right back at you. That's okay. So deflection is where the angle is like less than 180. Right? And reflection is where they come right back at you. Right? Yeah, yeah. One is like refraction, I want to say. Kind of. I don't want to use that word, right? Then that's two of them. Right, so the mass of the proton is one, mass of the neutron is one, mass of the electron is zero. What about charge? Charge on proton is positive one, neutron is electron is negative one, right? So we need to remember those small things about the um, about the proton, neutron, and electron. Let's say I gave you a particle 12C6. I just figure out number. Proton, right? Number of protons is always the atomic number. Number of electrons is always the same once the charge is zero. Okay? And how do you work out neutrons? You take the mass number or nuclear number and minus the atomic number. That's okay? So the mass minus the atomic will give you the number of neutrons. Everybody okay with that? How is Jordy? I enjoy, I enjoy the atom. You draw the nucleus, tell them it up, six protons on, and then you have to draw your shell. But how much shell? Right? The electron is six, right? So you have to work out, you have to work out how the electrons will be configured. The first shell could only hold, the next shell could, could hold up to, and the shells after that. Eight, right? Yeah. So since you have six electrons, it will be two and four, right? Two plus four is six. So you have, so you have two in your first shell, and your second shell, you have one, two, three, four, right? And then it's like paying them up, right? So your first shell can only hold two, your second shell can hold eight, and all the rest can hold eight after that. Well, at this level. Right, so you have your mass, you have your things, and so that's the insurance to that first part. Then you have um, three types of radiation. What are the three types of radiation? Gamma, beta, and alpha. Right, so you have three types of radiation. Alpha, helium particle, charge plus two. Beta, zero minus one, the electron, and gamma is just energy, right? This symbol here is gamma, right? Gamma is just pure energy. Are you okay with that? Right, um, which is larger, alpha or beta? Alpha is much larger, right? Alpha is much larger and has a much larger charge. A electron is smaller and has a smaller charge, right? So which one will cause ionization more? What is ionization? When a particle passes close to other neutral atoms to give it a charge, right? So if you have a charged particle passing next to air, right? That charged particle could cause the other 
neutral particles of kind of charge. Yeah, so that's called ionization. Which of these do you think will cause more ionization? The helium, which is larger with a larger charge, or the electron? Helium, right? So helium ionizes more. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Um, alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, alpha is stuck by paper and could travel a few centimeters in air. Beta is stuck by aluminum and could travel a few meters in air. Gamma, stuck by lead, could travel a few kilometers in air. Huh? And last thing, if you have an electric field, where will beta go? Where will gamma go? Where will alpha go? Yeah, gamma has no charge. So it's not going to be affected by an electric field, right? So gamma will go straight through. Alpha. Alpha is positive, so it will go towards the negative. negative. Gamma is? So theta is negative. Negative. negative, so it will go towards the why is the part shorter? Because it's lighter, right? Theta is lighter and it's pulled out of the field much faster. Are you okay with that? And then you have your um, magnetic field. I'll show you how to work it out when we do Fleming's left hand rule. Actually, we can do it one time. Right? I'll show you Clement's left hand move one time. Left one. Alpha is positive, right? Take out your left hand. Right? So you have your left hand. What is here? So we're going to try to we're going to try to figure out what direction alpha is going to move, right? So with your left hand, um, those who are online, you can look at the camera, right? <laughs> So with your left hand, your fourth thumb, your first finger is your magnetic field direction and your middle finger, second finger, is your current direction. Current is the movement of positive charge. Are you okay with that? So I'll do it here, right? So watch this here, right? Current is the movement of a positive charge. So if I have a positive charge going this way, right? Right, positive charge going towards me, X means going in. So this is your magnetic field. So the magnetic field going inwards. So your thumb, so your middle finger pointing towards me, and your first finger pointing in once. What direction your tongue pointing in? Up. So it means that it will move upwards. But okay with that? If I were to change this to an electron now, if I were to change it to an electron, the magnetic field is still going inwards, but if a positive charge moving towards me, then a negative charge moving the opposite way. So if a negative charge moving towards me here, if the negative charge moves towards me, then the positive charge go in the next way. So your middle finger has to point the next way. So your middle finger pointed that way, your, your first finger pointed inwards and your thumb is down. Are you okay with that? So that's the introduction into Fleming's left hand rule. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, so we'll stop there. Next day.